Next up is globals. There are some things that I assign at the global level. Um, so let's cover those now. The first thing to note is um, with this controller and with some other MIDI controllers like it, by default, the knobs will be set to full volume. So if you create a patch and you haven't assigned some of your knobs, then as you can see here with four of the knobs, the lights all the way up. So if your entire controller has all of the lights on, it makes it much harder to see which knobs are actually assigned and what the values are. So what I've done is I've assigned all of the knobs that aren't assigned globally to a dummy channel, as you can see in the channel strips on the right. And I've just assigned it to the volume of that and turned it all the way down. Similarly with the buttons, I've assigned it just to mute on that channel, which doesn't impact anything, but it means that as my patches are saved, it will default all of those knobs to off and you don't have these unnecessarily lights on on the controller. So that's handy if you've got a controller like mine. When it comes to audio routing, um, I think it's very useful to set up a keys one and keys two bus at the top level. For now, I'm using output three and four so that I can record the audio for this tutorial. So I've set up my keys one and keys two aux channels um, and I'll send the different instruments to those different channels. So this can be really useful if you're playing as an, the only keys player and you want to send say pianos to keys one out of one channel and pads and synths to keys two for another channel. Instead of having to go through all of your instruments and change all of your outputs, you just change the output of but the concert level bus. I've also set the output level meters to my display, it can be really useful to have meters on the screen just so that you can see, you know, if you're trying to diagnose, oh, there's no sound coming out, but you can see the meters are going up and down, that will tell you something about where the problems are, whether it's your plugins turned down or the output maybe isn't set up correctly. So one thing to note at this point is some people would set up a global reverb aux channel here. I've tended to not do that. Um, I in, in my first setup, I had a short and a long reverb that I could send any of my plugins to. Um, the reason I've not got that is because that meant that there were sometimes reverbs that, that I wasn't using sitting there uh, using CPU. So I now tend to use the reverbs built into the plugins that I'm using. The reverbs in the plugins might not be quite as high quality, but the trade-off for a lower CPU usage can be worth it when you're adding lots and lots of patches and plugins. The other global things to configure are the previous and next patch. and the master volume. I'm making sure to set the maximum master volume to zero, not plus six. Each of these knobs is also a button. So um, clicking in the to these top right hand knobs will go to previous and next patch for me. The other things that I've already set up in here is I've uh, set up the display stuff. So the clock that I mentioned in the previous video, the CPU meter, um, the MIDI light that tells me if there's actually MIDI coming in can be very useful for diagnosing problems. Uh, BPM, current and next patch are the, in the text boxes at the top left. 